our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. We send robots to fly over Mars, crawl over Mars, and soon to dig down into Mars, searching for signs that once, perhaps deep in the past, this planet may have been home to life. If there was life somewhere other than Earth, then Mars is the obvious choice. An obvious choice, but a puzzle nonetheless, and one that we're only just beginning to piece together. What really frustrates me the most is the amount of dust in certain regions. It prevents us from having access to what's underneath, either with a rover or from orbit. Finding evidence of life will require the skills of the finest detectives. In the case of something that died a long time ago, for example, three and a half billion years ago, you cannot possibly expect to find them in sort of tip-top shape. Our understanding of the planet Mars as a whole has progressed in leaps and bounds over the past 10 years. The ESA, European Space Agency's Mars Express, has been crucial to that advance. The satellite has just celebrated a decade in orbit around Mars, gathering data to allow scientists to make 3D maps of the surface and to spot where key minerals and features are to be found. There's been a huge number of discoveries over the last 10 years. If I had to highlight some, then I'd start with the detection of what we call hydrated minerals. That's to say minerals that were formed in the presence of water. And that shows us that there was water on the surface of Mars for many millions of years. The widespread discovery of such hydrated minerals across certain areas of Mars has intrigued specialists. Once they find where those clays and sulfates are, they'll find where water once was. The clays, these are things that form in the presence of water on Earth. And you need quite a lot of time to change rock into clay. Sulfates can form a little faster, similar to what are found in salt lakes on Earth, where you have water that's rich in minerals, which then evaporates, leaving mineral precipitate on the surface. The first photos of Mars from the Mariner 4 space probe in 1965 fed the intense speculation over water and life. That continued with the Viking missions in the 70s. A succession of small rovers followed until last year NASA's MSL mission landed a rover called Curiosity in spectacular fashion. It's basically a 900 kilo mobile science lab capable of scooping up rock and analyzing it internally. Curiosity's mission is not to look for life itself, but instead to search for indications the right conditions for life were present. Curiosity land is near the equator, down in the southern hemisphere. We can locate it from these volcanoes. Here's the volcano Elysium in the northern hemisphere. And further south, Gale Crater, where Curiosity landed. The most important part of Curiosity is a laser known as the ChemCam. It was conceived, designed and tested by engineers in the US and Toulouse, France. And its job is to shoot a laser at rocks then analyze the plasma gas given off to understand the composition of the rock. This test version is used to calibrate the ChemCam, which is on Mars now. What you see here is what we call the Martian chamber. And so we put these rocks inside it, we create a vacuum, and then we fill it with gas from this bottle, which contains gases similar to those in the Martian atmosphere. And that allows the plasma gas to be created under the same conditions as on Mars. 
d'être dans les conditions de, de Mars. Curiosity has already made its mark on Mars, literally. ChemCam can fire a laser beam at rocks up to six meters away for testing to see if they could be of scientific interest. If they are, the rover moves in and drills a small sample. We went to a little basin which looks like an ancient lake and that allows us to ask questions about whether life could have existed in the area. That's to say, did we ever have the climactic conditions for life? If life can appear somewhere other than Earth, could life have appeared there? Curiosity's quest to see if the right conditions for life ever existed appears to have been successful. In the place where it landed, there was once water. It was the right temperature, the right acidity, for the right amount of time. But about three billion years ago, all that changed when Mars's magnetic field faded and the atmosphere dissipated. Mars has an atmosphere that's too thin, with pressure that's too low for liquid water to be stable on the surface. But you do find water in the atmosphere in the form of ice. So we mainly have ice at the polar caps, which you can see here, and that's water in the form of ice on the North Pole, and there's also some on the South Pole. Mars Express showed there are deposits of ice beneath the planet's surface, hidden by dust. And it also appeared to find something else, something even more mysterious and intriguing. Methane. In 2004, right at the beginning of the mission, Mars Express showed that there was methane in the atmosphere in very small quantities. There are still discussions about the veracity of these observations, but if methane is there, it has to be explained, because in the atmosphere, methane is destroyed. Therefore, you need a methane source permanently emitting this gas. There are lots of discussions about what the source of this methane is. It could be geological activity, reactions between underground rocks and liquid water so creating the methane. This would mean Mars is geologically active, or it could be biological activity generating this methane. It's a mystery that Europe's new mission, ExoMars, is ready to solve. By 2016, it will have a satellite in orbit around Mars designed to test for methane. And by 2018, this rover will be rolling around the red planet. The rover's drill will be able to collect samples two meters beneath the surface. This will be the first mission to set out with the direct intention of finding signs of life, now and in the past. If you think your pickup truck is cool because it has 4x4 four four traction, well, this guy has 6x6x6. Six by six by six. Every wheel can rotate, turn left or right, and then there is an extra motor that allows a knee to swivel forwards and backwards. We can move and turn. We can also crab. This is very important if you want to image a rock. And you don't want to go back and forth a million times. You just crab in front of a rock. We can command it to not use the wheels as wheels, but to lift them up and use them as feet. The rover can also skate. So what could all this detective work lead to? What would life on Mars have looked like? Some of Earth's oldest rocks may bear clues. Here I have a rock that is three and a half billion years old. So this rock was deposited when volcanic ash rained on a lagoon and the ash fell down at the bottom of this lagoon. Where there was no life, you see these horizontal laminations. Where the cells were growing into colonies, they trapped sediments and formed these conical structures. You see here how the cone develops. Here you see what the cone looks like at the top of this deposit. If we were to find something like this on Mars, it would be very, very exciting. It would be one of the great findings of the mission. There's huge scientific debate over where to land the ExoMars rover. It's thought any form of life would have been active around four billion years ago. So the best locations are ancient valleys where water was present for a long time. Marth Valleys, that is uh, 
a very interesting place because it has massive, massive clay deposits and it's one of the oldest places that we have seen on Mars so far uh, at an altitude that we can reach. At times, Mars seems to be a frustrating neighbour, one whose secrets are often cloaked in dust and buried in time. Yet we're making great progress in piecing together the Martian puzzle, a puzzle that could also reveal a great deal about Earth. Did life start several times on Earth? We probably had the conditions for life to appear in several different places on Earth. So did it appear in several places at the same time? Did it appear, disappear, reappear, etc.? If we could see that on Earth, it would mean that if the right conditions are present, it's pretty easy for life to appear. We don't know if life started on Mars, but if it did start, it must have been the type of life that uh, digests chemicals uh, or minerals, so not photosynthetic bacteria like we have today producing oxygen, but more like the very primordial type of life we had also in the very early Earth. We think the main ingredients were present on Mars a long time ago, but is thinking enough? We don't know, and if we find life, then we can finally say that it is enough. And if we don't find it, then the mystery will endure.